It's Sunday morning and our church starts late, which is nice so we can sleep in, but we come back hungry. So one of the keys to being prepared is making the rice and beans before church, letting it sit and enjoying it when we come back. Let's fill these things out. We are going to enjoy Leah's Belizean rice and beans, the traditional way, fresh catch of the day. This is a meal for a whole family. So come, I'll show you the way I have learned and how I've adapted to make rice and beans. I've only been in Belizean 14, 15 years. So I've come up with my own version of it. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Mm. Something I've learned is you have to have the right kind of rice. You could use any kind of rice, I'm sure, but I prefer the kids' rice. I've used a few other kinds when I can't find this on the shelf, and I find by the time we go to eat it, they're kind of broken up into little pieces. But this is the kids' premium white rice here in Belize, and I think it's the best, not only because of the quality, but because it supports a great cause. A portion of the proceeds from this rice actually goes to support a really great ministry that is near and dear to our hearts here in Belize City. Want to make enough for leftovers, so I'm gonna make two cups of this and measure it out. And you always have to rinse the rice. It makes a big difference to get all of the starch out. Another reason we like this rice is it is quite clean. In some of the other ones, you'll find a lot of hulls, you'll find stones even. So about three or four times is usually sufficient. You can see the water is a lot more clear. For the next step, I believe it's important to have the rice dry. So I like to really strain it out and let it sit for a bit to dry out. So I always do this step first before I get every, everything else ready so it has time to really Dry back out now that it's clean. The rice is nice and clean. Gotten the starch out. Double check that there's no rocks or rice hulls left in there. It's ready to go once it's dry. While that's getting ready, I'm gonna put the coconut oil into the pot. This fries up the rice and so it doesn't stick. Growing up in Canada, when we made rice, I was taught to use a lot more water and to put butter in it so that the rice didn't stick and to put in salt. But instead, we fry it up in coconut oil. And I use enough to kind of cover the pot, the bottom of the pot at least. I love the flavor, so I use lots of it. And of course, my favorite brand is the local stuff the Silk Grass Farms. It used to be Glorious Belize, they changed the name, and it's, it's great. It doesn't have too strong of a flavor, it's just nice and fresh. I'm not good at eyeballing stuff, I'm not necessarily exact on my measurements, but one of the things I've learned is to measure out my stuff so I get it pretty close. For the beans, I like a good bean to rice ratio. So if I'm gonna do two cups of dry rice, I'm gonna do two cups of beans. I prefer homemade beans and they're already seasoned. I also prefer the black beans, but locally here, you might get red beans often if you order a plate of rice and beans. I make mine in my Instapot. Most people will make it in a slow cooker or on a pressure cooker on the stove, but I like my Instapot. I find I can make rice and beans from dry to ready to eat within two hours or less, whereas if you do it in other ways, often you have to soak it. I don't often remember in time <laughs> to soak it too much in advance. If you want rice and beans and you didn't make beans and you don't have time for that, you can cheat. You can use canned beans and then since it doesn't have the seasoning, complete seasoning. This is something I put in my beans, then you would just add that in when you add the beans when cooking, along with garlic, salt and pepper, and you're good enough to go, but of course, fresh is best. You'll notice I'm taking out the water from the beans because I'm gonna measure that separately to make sure I have enough. I'm draining the beans to make sure I have two cups of beans. Again, I suppose you could do more, 
or less, but now I'll top it up with a little bit more just because we love, love the beans and the rice. And now I'll measure out the water I'm gonna need. Again, I'm doing this all now because I wanna give time for my rice to dry so it's ready to be fried. I like the flavor. This is where you're gonna get a lot of the flavor is in the water of the beans. I've made the mistake of putting too much or using only bean water and I found that it's not enough moisture. I don't know if it's the starch from the beans, but my rice turns out like sticky and crunchy. I've learned to do about half and half. So I'll do about half a cup of the bean water and then top it up with regular water. So that's just a bit over. I'm gonna top it up with water. Again, just a bit over, but that's all right. Now I'll prepare it by adding the next secret ingredient, which is the coconut milk powder. This is a big pack, so I'll only use half, but you can get smaller ones and you put the whole thing in. All right, I actually dumped the whole thing in. Oh well, more flavor. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Now most Belizean, true Belizean, through and through, they would measure. A trick I've heard a few times is you measure to like your first knuckle. So when you have the rice in there, you put in enough water for your first knuckle and that's the right amount of, of water. I <laughs> cannot master that method yet, so I still measure and then kind of eye it out to make sure we're about that, that same amount. But I'm still learning. Now the rice is fairly dry, dry enough, and I'll turn on the oil to heat up. hot in the kitchen. So the oil's getting hot, so you can tell by the little lines in there. So I'm gonna throw my rice in, fry it up. I'm gonna let it heat up a little bit before I add and stir in the beans. Right, now I'm gonna stir in the beans. I just stir it until it's mixed together and looks like that. <laughs> now that it's mixed together, sizzling good, I'm gonna slowly add in the bean water, water and coconut milk powder. I'm cooking this all on high heat. And later I'll turn it down. So I'll add a little bit more in. It should be good. Now I'll let it sit covered until it starts bubbling and then I'll turn it down. As you can see, if you come in close, it's Bubbling pretty hard. So I'm just gonna give it a stir, mix it around, cover it again, and turn it all the way on low. Now I'll leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes and check on it again then. I always have the habit of peaking too often, letting the steam out. So I always make myself wait 15 to 20 minutes and then sometimes if it's still got a little bit too moisture, I just turn off the heat and let it sit. It seems to be the trick, is to let it sit after cooking for a good while. It's been 15 minutes, I'm starting to smell. Typically there's a little bit of dark rice on the bottom, um, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take a peek. It's still quite wet. So I know you're not supposed to, but this is what I do. I always give it a little stir. Okay, so I see it's not bad. You can see the bottom, yeah, it's getting a little crunchy down there, which is actually my favorite part, but it's still quite wet. What I'm gonna do is turn it off, put the lid on, take it off the burner so it's not so hot, and then let, let it sit. And by the time we get home from church, it's ready to enjoy. Now you can enjoy this with stew chicken, it's a popular one. You can throw some chicken seasoned up in the slow cooker and it's ready with the rice and beans when you get home from church. 
The most traditional way, I suppose, would be fish. Um, one of the first popular meals, I'm assuming, would be here in Belize because we're right by the sea. And that's actually how we're gonna eat it. I'm not gonna forget this life ever. <sighs> Put we your hands sure up. can eat it, right? Papa? Wow, this is a big fish, guys. We sure can eat it. Yeah. Right, this it's, is a meal for a whole family. You can eat that. It's huge. It's still alive? Yeah. Don't yeah. lose it. Oh, is that a red snapper? Hey, Good job, snapper. guys. I told you you won't believe your eyes. Those are big scales. Where are the guts? Right there? Oh, now he's dead. Like this right red there. snapper can actually bit my finger yeah. off. This is sharp, Fletcher. The night was a very special night. One of my gifts was a seven feet cast net to catch minnows. And we catch minnows with Chase and Anya in the morning. So we threw the line tonight and we caught black snapper. It was cool to catch this with Chase and Anya. Yeah, because it's actually talking. No, no, no. <laughs> it's huge. We're going to get it ready so that we can make it barbecue. <gasps> Papa, this is can... unbelievable right here. Papa. Dive, great adventure. One of our biggest fish we caught here in front of our house. We're going to do a barbecue fish. And for it to cook much faster, I'm going to do some fish fillet here. So I'm doing this so we can get the fish cooking much faster. Here in Belize, we eat the head. And even the eyeballs. I don't like the eyeballs. The onion and I love the eyeballs. So we're going to put some onions in here. Put some pepper. black pepper. And the eyeballs? Oh, that's going to hurt. Put some little lime there to get a lime flavor. Mmm, look at that. I'm sure I'm gonna eat this fish all by myself. <laughs> oh no, Jess, this is a big fish. Nice and warm. Whoa, whoa. Dame ese otro año. And we're gonna do this like this. I'm gonna put this big baby right like this. Like I said, I want it to cook much faster because we need to go to Fellowship Church. We're gonna do, we're gonna cover it. So the more we cover it, the much faster it cooks. Leave this 30 minutes here and you're gonna have some really nice fish. Cover this baby. And we're gonna give him 30 minutes and we see how far it's cooking. I can't wait until I eat that big fish. What I love about her cooking, these are like the best mom I ever had. But I like the lime on the tail. Last night when we were exploring, I thought, I already saw a shrimp. And so I saw this little tiny little creature. And I was wondering what it was. So I took a closer look. And then like one of this part went like this, like an octopus and quickly we swam away in the blink of an eye. And now that I'm looking at this, I think it's a reef squid because it was pointy like this. So I think it's a reef squid and it was probably a baby because it was about this size. Wow. Look at that, that's low on meat right there. <gasps> it looks like no bone in that. No bone, you got that right. Pulled the pot off the stove, haven't opened it yet, so let's take a peek. Now we'll let the family be the judge if it passes. Very good, very good. I'm always nervous eating fish. I don't know if I'm gonna chomp or choke on a bone, but no, the flavor's amazing. This is what we have been waiting for, is a fish. Oh, look at that. Gray snapper right there. So Anya's favorite is the head. My favorite is the tail. <laughs> Wait, is the tail there? Yep. Oh. Okay. Get out. Oh, exactly how I like it. And now with some fish, 
You have to remember back in the day here in Belize, we never used to eat a lot of chicken. We used to eat rice and beans with fish. And this is probably the best rice and beans we've ever had with a fresh fish that we caught last night. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Thank you, Leah. I always do very good rice and beans. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm mm. Anya, a part of the Unbelievable Perezes. And I live in Belize. Yes, Belize, a small part of the whole entire world. It's one of the smallest. If you want to help us, you only have to do a little bit. Just press the subscribe button underneath and share this to others. That's all you need to do and leave the rest to us.